how you come down. sun started to come up it is absolutely pouring rain it's another day in the world today I was awake at four o'clock listen to a wise man from Romania this morning as he basically gave a uh, common sense play-by-play -play what's going on on the planet today and how uh, if the West doesn't succeed with Putin and the Ukraine, that Romania, where he lives, is probably the next Ukraine 2.0 due to the West, right? He said they've got military vehicles in the streets nonstop, planes overhead. He's moved his family to the mountains, trying to be self-sufficient. But like he said, no matter what, you still got to get fuel, right? There's still some food things you got to buy. He's an older, wise, intelligent man. He, what he basically explained, was trying to explain, was that the governments are at war with the people currently. Mostly everywhere. <laughs> it's one way to look at it. It sure is true. It's very frustrating. Very frustrating. Like that, the man said the other day, humanity is being shown its flaws rapidly right now. Looks like we're getting shotgunned our flaws. And like he said, we have to see them. And uh, what did he say? You need to be shown all the holes, all the leaks in a boat before you can fix them. So when you hear it put that way, then at least there's hope the boat will float again one day, right? So frustrating. I was telling Sarah, like, Sarah fairly lives in bliss in a way. She doesn't pay much attention to it. She listens to me now and then. But she, uh, she, she can, her anxiety can flare up. So I don't, I, I, I try to keep her as comfortable as possible and not, um, plague her with the shit that I follow and watch and I'm aware of, but. What I say to her this morning is, it's frustrating when you have fight in you as opposed to not, as opposed to just going with the flow. I know, uh, I know some military officers here in Canada. A lot of people, actually. And 100% uh, of them despise our current leadership. Despise. But there's still a part of that machine that once it's greased, it just keeps rolling forward. No matter no matter what, what you're being told between your ears, you have to follow the machine. It's a very bizarre thing to watch, isn't it? You'd think, at this stage of the game, there should be, you'd think, I would think, just like in the movies, the... the the good guys, you would think that there would be some kind of elite military trained people right now in the world who have access to the access to the tools, the intelligence, the knowledge, the tools, the manpower they need to eliminate the bad guys by now, no matter where the bad guys sit. 110%, there's got to be some of those people in those positions, military who see what's going on and and think the same thoughts but they're not acting on it god i would if i had the if i had the the means to do it that's i'd dedicate my the rest of my existence to trying to eliminate the, these bad people anyway that's what i was listening to this morning at four o'clock what's up adventure puppy what are you doing did you eat all your treats i brought that bone in for you all right why don't you go chewing that Hmm? Anyway, I'm gonna listen. To, gonna get some voices heard. Probably not making much sense. All you who follow what's really truly going on on the planet, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. So, who do we got? Let's listen to 
some important voices, voices of the people. All this planet spins in a crazy direction. This is titled Little People and Bigfoot. Hello, feel free to use my name, which is Rebecca Wyatt. Rebecca, welcome. Glad to have you in the club. The club of free brave people. Everyone calls me Peck, pronounced like what a chicken does, Peck. <laughs> okay, Peck, let's get into it. I learned of you on an interview you did with Nino Rodriguez. I was shocked, not really, listening to you talk about Bigfoot. I live in Northeast Oklahoma, about an hour away from the Arkansas border, in between two little towns, Pegs and Locust Grove. I'm on about two acres backed up by woods. I've heard all kinds of animals on and around my property, coons, coyotes, wild hog, cougar, etc. It's when I don't hear anything that I get uncomfortable and nervous. It all started with a Skeely, S-K-E-E-L-E-Y, bracket, little person, end bracket, and let me explain. I bought this property in 2014 with my husband, who had just won his fight with cancer. Property needed a lot of work to be put it, to put it mildly. It basically looked like, like a, it looked like a shanty on an overground, overgrown dump site. We moved in in May that year and immediately went to work on the place. He started on the house and I started on the yard. About 200 feet from the house was what looked like, at one point, a shed. The roof was barely there and fallen in. Walls were rotted out and the floor had become part of the dirt. I knew I was going to take it down but had to clean up the trash and the nature around it first. It took me from May until mid-August to get from the house to around the shed cleaned and cleared. I was on the back side of the shed picking up trash. I should say I also have a lot of trees on my property. I was in between a tree and the shed when I noticed out of the corner of my eye a little person leaned up against a block under the shed watching me work. No shit. I froze for a minute, my brain trying to process what my eyes were seeing. I immediately went back to my job for a few minutes, pretending as best I could that I hadn't seen it. Then did my best to mimic, like my back was hurting and needed to stand and stretch and also needed to get a fresh water and moved my ass as fast as I could without just bolting back to the house. I told my husband what I had just seen and refused for a while to work around that shed by myself. It's completely torn down and gone now. Our experiences started about a month later and my husband's cancer came back with a vengeance. That sucks. That sucks. It was just my husband, myself, and our youngest son, 10, living here at the time. We would hear branches breaking at least two or three times a week. Large branches. Things crashing in the woods behind the house, knocking on the trees, etc. This went on for almost a year. I didn't really think much about it at the time. I mean, I live in the boonies and there was a lot of wildlife around. My husband passed away the following year in July and it was just my youngest son and myself living here, here then. It seemed like the knocking and the tree breaking slowed down a lot and we didn't even think about it. I want to say it was September when we heard the first scream. This is a small house, basically a square. One half is a living room kitchen and laundry room. The other half is my room, my son's room, and the bathroom. Our rooms are right next to each other, each with a window facing out on the side of the house. His room has a window facing the back towards the woods, and mine a window facing the front of the house towards those woods. We had both gone to bed. He was watching TV, and I was trying to get some shut-eye. It had to have been around midnight when we heard the scream. He immediately made me sit up in bed, and my son came running in my room and jumped in the bed with, with me looking terrified. We both sat there staring at each other in the dark. I'm trying to figure out what the hell we just heard. My rational part of my brain telling me it had to have been a cougar, but the other part of my brain going, uh, no, you know what a cougar sounds like, and that was not a cougar. Minutes went by and we heard something. I don't know how to describe it. Grunts, hoots, smaller howls, 
I'm not sure, but it seemed like it was talking. Definitely not anything I've ever heard before and pronounced because it was dead silent except for that. Whatever it was had moved closer to my house, though. Thank goodness it didn't last long, and that was it for the rest of the night, and for a few weeks. A couple weeks after that, we started hearing something moving around outside our house at night. This is towards the end of October, now nearly November. Because of all those trees around my place, we have a lot of leaves on the ground in the fall. It was very loud. And you could tell it was something big. I don't know why I hadn't connected anything together. In my mind, I'm still thinking it's local wildlife. My son and I used to try to figure out what animal it was, like a game, until whatever it was jumped on my roof one night. I mean, in one jump. You could hear it walk up to the house, then thud on my roof. We heard it walking all around my roof. Remember, I have a small house. It took a few minutes to... It took a, f it took a few minutes to cover my whole roof and then thud. Jumped off the roof and ran off. I'm scared at this point. I call my second-born son the next day and tell him what's been going on. He thinks it's a prowler, a person scoping the place out and probably looking for the perfect time to break in. He moves in with me the next weekend. It's myself now, my two sons, and my son's girlfriend. I have a trailer on the back side of my property that I had been using for storage space. My son went all over the property and came back convinced it's a prowler because someone had said, because someone he said had gone through the trailer and pilfered everything in it. And it was a mess back there. We'd clean it up, recognize things, put more locks on doors and windows, and every couple of weeks the back door would be broken and things tore up and scattered around. My son was determined to catch whoever. At this point, thinking anything supernatural or out of the realm of normal wasn't even on my radar. We made it through the holidays, uneventful. I want to say it was March when my youngest son saw another ski -lee in the house. He saw it run across the living room towards the front door in, a, in the decorative mirrors I have on the back side of some cabinets facing the living room. This scared him pretty bad. A couple weeks later, we heard the second scream. Both my sons were in my youngest son's room playing video games. I was reading in my room, and my other son's girlfriend was in the living room watching a movie. It's kind of late, but not too late, and the loudest scream I've ever heard about made me piss myself. And I'm not going to lie. My heart dropped. And everyone ended up in my room again. There's not a follow-up scream or talking like the last one, but it sounded like something heavy got thrown down and crashed into the trees. We all started trying to figure out what the hell that was. Needless to say, my son is determined to find out what the hell's going on and deal with the person creeping around. Both my sons said a few times that they heard some more screams and growls and hoots and screeches, but further away in the woods. I didn't hear anything, but I believed him. After that second scream, I'm starting to think something about this is not normal, and I began to think about everything since we moved in, and that's when I realized that every time we heard banging or crashes or screaming, there was never any other sounds. No crickets or tree frogs, no birds or anything. Like the whole woods went silent, and both times we saw a little person prior to the screaming. I'm spooked now, but my son still thinks it's people until one night in late May. Damn. My youngest son and myself had gone to bed. My other son and his girlfriend had stayed up and were playing video games in the living room. They were in there with the lights out and had the TV turned down. My son said this happened after midnight. He said he saw a light flash outside and he thought it was a flashlight, so he quickly put his shoes on and grabbed my youngest son's baseball bat and quietly opened the front door, and he went out fast to surprise whoever it was. He said he made it halfway across the front yard when he was immediately gripped with fear and froze in his tracks. Across the dirt road in front of my house, just my side of the tree line, he said he saw four to five huge figures moving in 
single file into the woods. So black he could just make out their outline and their eyes glowed yellow. He said the one at the end line stopped and stared at him until the others made it into the woods. My son said he was so terrified he didn't want to take his eyes off it or turn his back to it. So he just started backing up slowly, making his way back to the front door until he made it back in the house where he shut and locked up every lock on the door. He said he sat there for several minutes trying to collect himself and get a hold of his fear and grabbed the flashlight and a better weapon. I went back outside to find them, but they were gone. When I got up the next day, he told me all of it. He got no sleep that night because he was afraid they'd come back. I blessed the property, all of it, and all the buildings on it. We haven't had any issues like that since I blessed the property. Thank God. We can hear things around the property from time to time, but nothing on it. I don't know if seeing skeelies prior to the Bigfoot showing up is normal or just a coincidence, or if many people just aren't paying attention. I don't know if people even know what they are, or it's just because I'm half Cherokee and half Norwegian, and it's just a native tale. End of email. I'm half Norwegian too. I don't think that has much to do with anything though. That's alarming. The little people, we've heard that quite a bit, right? We don't really get too many people emailing in about seeing little people, but one thing we did lack in this email was the description of the little person you saw. I'm curious, what did you see? Was it like, you know, like I, I haven't a clue what to picture when people say, I saw a little person. I don't know what to picture. Am we seeing somebody in a mini pair of Levi's jeans and a, and a haircut? I'm asking honestly, are we seeing, uh, what are they wearing? Are they in buckskins? Long matted hair? Unshaven? Buttons? Zippers? Pullovers? Do you know, like I'm being straight up honest, a little person, a little person. I have zero uh, history, I have zero knowledge of little people my fellow, uh, myself. I do not have any direct knowledge when it comes to the quote, little person, end quote, sightings that a lot of people have, have mentioned. And it's very, very common knowledge amongst most of the native uh, communities, right? And, they're, and they've been said to be not good. I know that, but I don't know the, I don't know the the detailed descriptions of the little people right now. Like if somebody asks me, what do they look like? My, my answer right now is, uh, I don't know. I don't know what they look like. Little people. That's all I know. So, please, if you would, uh, could you email me back and tell me exactly, give me, could you give me the, the uh, detailed description of the little person? I, would, I think that would be quite valuable for a lot of us here. And I'm sorry you're going through this shit. It sucks, right? It's unfortunate. I'm glad you came forward. We're super glad you came forward and you're talking about it openly. You know, it's emails like this when I tell everybody, you know, a lot of people can easily shrug off somebody's experience without looking at it from different angles. The first thing I always think of when I'm reading is like, yeah. Yeah, I think I just wake up this morning after seeing this guy on uh, Nino's channel. And I'm like, man, what could my creative mind do today? What should I make up today? An absolute bullshit story. What could I come up with today to get some attention on this guy's YouTube channel? Said, basically nobody ever, right? Anyway, moving along. Thank you so much for that email. Please email me back. And even title it, Little Person Description, if you could, all right? To make sure I don't miss it. I really, really, really am curious of the description. And keep blessing your property. Do whatever it works. Do whatever works to uh, keep you and yours safe, though, all right? And hopefully live in comfort. You know, we just, everyone just wants to live in comfort. We just want a fair crack at being happy and comfortable and safe for crying out loud. This is what we're getting at, right? We deserve a fair crack at having a great life. 
you know? Man. Moving along. <clears throat> this is titled, Sabe, Killed or Dropped from the Sky. Oh, Sabe, Kill or Dropped from the Sky, sorry. This was found 15 miles behind closed gate, backside of Mount Spokane Forestry Ground by my 19-year-old son that works for logging company. Came back two hours later, gone. No sign. All right, so there's attachment there. It's fresh this morning. I downloaded it, but when I click, when I get attachments and press play, my phone goes to the play screen and it says it's broken. And then it gives you an option when you get an attachment on your iPhone of view or download. If I hit view, it won't play it. If I download, then I figured it out. This saves to my uh, folders. Then I gotta crack open the folder and then it'll play in my folders. What the hell's up with that? Anyway, I've got the video here. So I will download this onto my Dropbox. This is all I know. <laughs> download on my Dropbox and then I put this from Dropbox into the computer and then I edit it into the video. That's what I gotta do. But I can hit it and play it right now. This has gotta be the craziest shit I've ever seen. Fucker fell and jammed a log through itself. This has got to be the craziest shit I've ever seen. Fucker fell and jammed a log through itself. Okay, it's a white-tailed deer. It's a it's a mature buck. Uh, he just lifted the head. It's, I'm gonna replay it a few times. All right. It doesn't seem to be bloated up. It's not bloated. That's a weird hole. Why is the skin tore off the belly, but the belly's not cut open? Okay, so that's not just fur. I'll be able to do this on the editing program a little smoother. Unless I hit pause, it'll let me scroll. There we go. Now I can scroll it. All right, so. That is not fur rubbed off of the belly area. That is hide. That's hide missing. All right, that is hide missing. This is what's, what interests me when I first look for clues. I've seen a lot of dead animals. If it was fur rubbed off from being dragged or something skidding across the belly area, I don't know why the belly area has really got my attention right now. That's flesh, that's meat. That's what it looks like when you rip the hide and the hair off on that belly. All right, how did that go down? That looks really weird. Because an animal couldn't really pull that off. But anyway, now the hole with what looks like a dirty root. Well, no, that's a pine, I think. So what else we got here? We got Can't really tell if that rear right ham is broken or not. Might be dislocated. Looks dislocated and tore. I bet you can see meat and flesh in the hind quarter. Anyway, uh, I'm looking at the bases of the antlers. That's a mature buck for sure. It's not bloated, and that is a really real. It's a real strange hole. Now. I haven't a coup. Looks like it possibly came from sliding above the bank. Looks like it must be a steep bank there. There's not like it. I'm trying to be a, a, a detective here. I would like to have seen a 360 of the whole area. What was above that deer on the bank. Now take note. This side of the deer is not covered in all of that dirt that's on the bank under its front feet. Alright, so it didn't come rolling down that bank. If it did slide down the bank, it was slid down on the underside. It didn't roll around. That's all I can tell. It definitely hit the road. Alright, you can see the tire marks. 
going along the edge of that road and you can see where the spill of the dirt and everything is pushed on top so that carcass slid down that bank when it came to rest 110 percent didn't drop straight down from the sky where it lay so if it did come, f fall from the sky it did it above the bank somewhere I haven't seen a kill look like that ever myself uh, what else there's no blood coming out of its nose or mouth so there's no lung trauma there didn't bleed out there's no teeth marks in the skull there's no teeth marks in the neck interesting there you go shared crazy I would have loved to seen more of the zone around it above it for sure who knows maybe if your son goes back there he can go to the exact same spot and do a video or walk up the bank and see if there's a top of a tree missing or a burn there with some bare pine trees i don't know that's a that's a real weird one <laughs> that's all i can say not much more i can say about that but i thoroughly looked that over to see if it was a natural kill doesn't look like it to me <laughs> at all creepy that's creepy gone two hours later gone now here's a here's a funny one so if it's something as big and powerful as what we're familiar with and it already dusted that mature buck uh why would it be laying there on the side of the road why not take off with it because you're not going to be slowed down instead of just leaving it there like just just say let's just say i'm some uh secretive being i killed that buck somehow uh-oh, somebody's coming. There's a human being coming down the road. Well, I think I'll just leave the deer right here, and then I'll step off into the bushes for a bit, because maybe it's comical to see the reaction. I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, you're just trying to... I've found that common sense, rational thinking doesn't fit with these beings. It just doesn't. They don't do anything that I would think is the right thing to do when it comes to us. They just don't. Everything seems irrational, doesn't make sense. A lot of the shit they do does not make sense for the way my brain perceives and reacts and thinks. Right? Somebody's coming. I got this mature dead buck on the side of the road. I can easily pick it up because my kind have been seen picking up whole elk and running with them. So that's not an issue. I'm going to grab that sucker by the antlers of the neck and, or the leg and I'm just going to leave with it. Why am, I just gonna, why am I going to leave that deer on the side of the road so these humans can see it? And start nosing around when I don't want them nosing around. I don't want nothing to do with them. Why? And then I'll wait till they leave and then I'll, I'll make it disappear. Why? <laughs> right? Doesn't make sense. Anyway. That's an odd one. Okay, here we go. It's a long one. No title. Mark this is red. Dear Steve, no need to share my name. Okie dokie. Here's a story a friend shared with me about his encounter. Because of this story, I became interested in all things Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Sabe. I stumbled on your How to Hunt site and I've been fascinated by all the people's stories as you read them. Thank you for doing this, as it is a real outlet to get this often dip to get these often difficult recounts off our chest, so to speak. I think it's so hard for many because it is both fearful internally and can be embarrassing outwardly when our friends and family ridicules us for sharing. Anyway, my rant for the day, on to the story. This happened in a remote wooded area of northern Minnesota, about 35 miles west of Duluth. My friend is telling me all this several years ago. He said he was out taking a sauna after doing some summer haying and evening from chores. The sauna was about three forties down from the farmhouse and set back from the road near a small creek. He was sitting on a stump taking a cool, taking a cool off session between periods of super hot sauna sweat sessions. I think we read this, didn't we? Or else the person that had the sauna sent it to us. This was a typical of those Finnish 
of Finnish tradition. A bit of background, we had become friends from having a commonality of family, church, and raising small children at the time, and a great love for hunting and the outdoors. He had invited me out to hunt with him on the land surrounding the family farm and adjacent acreage. After getting to know him better for three years or so, he asked me a few questions which led me into him telling a story. First, he asked me if I was ever in the woods and felt something was watching me. I thought, no, not really. Then he showed me a book he had, and I saw it was about Bigfoot tales and the old stories from old times of miners, woodsmen, and railroad men. I thought I heard about Bigfoot and had even seen the Patterson-Gimlin film clip shown at a local theater. This is way back in the late 60s during the intermission of an, of an outdoorsman movie. This must have been shortly after they had filmed the footage. This had fascinated me as I was a city kid who had a never-ending desire for hunting and the outdoors. And then I remembered a TV documentary narrated by Peter Graves called Monsters, where they had reenacted several Bigfoot encounters that people had witnessed. They made it seem so real. Some of the stories reminded me of what you have been reading from your emails. Very impactful to me anyway. Okay, back to the story. He then floored me when he said he had seen a Bigfoot himself and began to tell me the whole story about how it happened by the family sauna. He was sitting on the stump, cooling off a few feet directly in front of the sauna, minding his own business, when he felt this, that strange sense that someone or something was watching him. He was naked and very much alone in that remote spot where, okay, we, I, I either read this or read it from the person. I'm going to keep going. He was naked and very much alone in that remote spot where the sauna had been built years ago by his Finnish dad. He slowly turned his head back towards the sauna and saw a tall, black, very hairy head and shoulders peering at him from above the eave of the sauna. He first thought, his first thought was that it was his older brother playing a prank on him in some kind of mask and suit. He yelled out, I see you, brother's name. Then he realized it wasn't his brother. Adrenaline shot through him instantly. His next thought, it was a bear. In a moment, his woods and farm upbringing brought the thought to him that a bear isn't that tall. The eve of the sauna was a good six and a half feet tall from the ground at its lowest. And this being, whatever it was, stood two or three feet over the sauna roof line. This really shook him. And his fine Finnish hair stood upright. Fear and a sense of impending doom gripped his very being. He said he could feel it into the pit of his stomach. Then the creature went back out of sight behind the sauna momentarily, and the frighteningly and then frighteningly reappeared to continue looking at him from the other eve. As if it wanted to get a better angle, perhaps. Now he was even more terrified and wanted to run to his truck and get the heck out of there. But then he thought, I'm naked and my clothes are back towards this thing inside the sauna. The creature stood there for what seemed like way too long, just quietly watching him naked on that stump. And then finally, it quietly moved back out of sight, melting into the woods behind the sauna. I've thought about this often, and after hearing hundreds of stories of other encounters, I think this might have been a younger Sabe. Just very curious about these hairless beings they shared the land with. He didn't know how long he should wait there till it was safe to make, his, to make his escape. Waiting on that stump with super high adrenaline in fear. And then after what seemed like another eternity of waiting, he made a decision to go or stay sitting motionless. Should it reappear again or maybe bring a few friends too? Would it possibly reappear and chase him down? Finally just went for it. He thought... I can't stand it any longer. He ran into the sauna, grabbed his clothes. He didn't like the idea of going back towards where it had been. He said he had never gotten dressed so fast in his life. He felt the thing was still there, peering into the little back window of the changing room. An eerie feeling for sure. He sped back to the farm in the trusty old farm truck and told his dad and brothers about what he had just seen. They all came back with lanterns and their deer rifles and looked around the sauna. They didn't see any distinct footprints. Just the grass around the back was matted down a lot. 
They never saw the creature again. Since then, I have a keen interest in this subject. As to, what did my friend actually see? He didn't know exactly what it was at first either. Not until he happened upon an old book with pictures and drawings about Bigfoot encounters and figured that was what it was. This all occurred in the mid to late 70s. He was about 18 and 19 at the time and he was hard, a hard-working family man. Totally honest and not at all a jokester. In fact, it took him several years of friendship until he felt comfortable sharing this with me. Typical. I doubt he has ever told anyone else either. Now, years later, and at 65 myself, I find out how fortunate I am to have had many years of hunting and fishing in the great wooded areas around northern Minnesota and Ontario, and then I stumbled across your channel online. Appreciate your way of letting people share their stories and experiences. I personally have never seen a creature such as this. Part of me wants to see one, maybe from a safe distance, yet another part fears what it would do to me inside. I've been watching your channel for three years or so and have come to really enjoy the emails from the people. I find I am building my own puzzle from all the encounters you've read. I think you really are helping people cope with these strange and unasked for experiences. Sorry about your loss of Mr. Macaroni. Wishing you and Sarah all the best. Keep up the good work. Kindest regards. Love to see you on those live hunts. All right. The macaroni mentioned. So this was sent a while back, but it doesn't say it was sent a while back on my, in my notes. But whatever. If it was read before, who gives a shit? It got read again. There's a lot of new people here. And I thank this man for his kind words. And who knows, maybe you are lucky you never saw one. And it's funny, every time I'm in here and I gaze out here at first light, I'm always wondering if, if I'm going to see something in that timber looking at me one of these times. It changes everything when you see these beings. It changes every single thing. Well, for most people. A lot of people go into shock, their brain shuts down, and they put it and store it away in a dark, deep, dark place and never pull it up again. They don't want to accept it. They don't want to face it. They don't want to talk about it. But then for other people whose brains enjoy functioning freely, it changes everything and you question everything. Everything. And then you start digging and then you start seeing the bullshit patterns and then next thing you know, you become very aware and very frustrated. <laughs> it's the only way to put it right now in a quick, in a quick way. Excuse me as I'm gazing out into that dark dreary moss covered timber and uh no updates around here haven't heard anything i don't know how often they come right through here but they do they come through here uh sarah smelt the smell 110 percent she smelt the smell uh up the road and there's a lot of rotten salmon around there and there wasn't rotten salmon and there's um I thoroughly went all around that timber. There's nothing rotten dead laying there. I took the dog. Dog act normal. She didn't go for any scent, but she 110% smelt the smell. There's a bit of a flurry of activity here for about, I think it was for about three or four days of flurry. And uh, going from uh, some of the local people have emailed me in, the taxi driver who him and his, his fare saw one crossing in front of the car right up here right up here dead in line with where sarah was walking when she totally felt something right behind her and turned around nothing there and that went down in the same few days that she smelt the smell and then but it was about i think it was maybe a month prior is when her and the daughter saw the wide big yellow eyes going back and forth right out in the back the backyard here but nothing's I guess what I'm saying is nothing's really gone down here for a bit but I'm thinking obviously I don't think anything's right here around my place full time no way it'd be shit going on non-stop and it's not it just seems to be every very once in a while right now I haven't been down the river for a while who knows? We'll go back down there when I get home. We're, we're out of here tomorrow. We're gone tomorrow. But I'll keep this going as best I can. But uh, when I get back, 
I'm going straight into steelhead fishing, <laughs> which is going to be a smack dab in the middle of where a lot of my native friends have had multiple sightings. So hopefully I get left alone. I'm not looking for it. I'm not asking for it. Just leave me alone. But who knows? We'll see what you guys see while I'm making those videos, right? I'm babbling. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mark, this is red. This is titled 25 feet from me for 20 minutes twice. That'd be enough to change up everything for you in this lifetime. Four nights ago. Really? When was this sent? This is recent. Four nights ago, I drove from Indianapolis, Indiana, an hour and a half south to one of my favorite parks to sit in front of a campfire at night from roughly 6.30 at night to about midnight. When I got there, there was one set of two guys around the campfire, maybe 300 yards away. Since much, since much of the park is closed for this evening, the fell like I had much of this 24,000 acre park all to myself. I got my fire going. I turned on my phone onto its highest setting and played the Sierra sounds of several supposed Bigfoot talking to each other and the samurai chatter. And I stood between my fire and one of my favorite spots, 25 feet away in the woods, and I held up an apple in one hand and a banana in the other. And I told the forest, it's me, Jeff, and I'm here to enjoy your forest, but I'm not here to take any game or bother you or your family. And I tossed a couple of apples and bananas into the woods and asked that no rocks be thrown at me because I'm giving them food. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. So you played a recording to call them into you and then gave them food to tell, you to, tell them to leave you alone. <laughs> hmm. The two guys to my left were packing up their truck and drove away. As it was starting to get dark and I sat down at a picnic table two feet from my fire and immediately heard crunching walking footsteps just out of the firelight at the very edge of the woods, maybe 30 feet away from me. I guess they left, <laughs> right? I never heard the footsteps approach before that. It's as if whatever it was had been standing there the whole time. I heard it walk over to my campsite, just out of the firelight, and then split into two sets of footsteps that sounded bipedal and covered a lot of ground quickly in front of me from, say, 10 to 2 on a clock face, if I'm looking straight out. The leaves there are probably four or five inches deep, and whatever they were, made zero attempt to cover their steps or noise, and it sounded like they were rooting around in the leaves, exactly where I tossed the apples and bananas. I got up and walked around my fire towards them, and all activity stopped. And I tossed a couple more food items, and then sat down again, and their rummaging continued. On my drive to the park, I had called a couple of friends and told them I was going to do a campfire. And they said maybe they'd stop by for a few minutes. Leroy and Debbie showed up and hung out for maybe 20 minutes, and all activity ceased. While they were there, I walked 300 yards away to, to the other camper's fire to make sure that it was out. And something paced me to my right on the way over, making no attempt to be quiet in the woods. When they left... They were no more than a hundred yards away driving off in Leroy's truck when I heard loud footsteps coming through the leaves straight up from the valley below very quickly. And I was a little worried as it was going to break through in the firelight, but instead stopped right at the edge of the forest. And the pacing started up right again. It probably went on for 15 minutes as my fire slowly went out and I sat in the dark at the picnic table talking to whatever was in the dark and just listening. Super cool night. I had a loaded handgun to my right and a machete sitting on the picnic table, but I put all thoughts of the gun and machete out of my head and thought nothing but tranquility and peaceful thoughts. And the whole time, whatever is in the woods, I kept calmly talking to myself if they were, as if, to as if they were friends of mine. Probably a rabid chipmunk or raccoon, who knows? sounded large and bipedal as it pumped branches out of the way, pacing back and forth in front of my fire while I'm guessing whatever it was, looking for the fruit I'd thrown out there. Thought I'd share a cool evening. Anytime that I felt fear, I quickly pushed it down and reminded myself why I go up there. 
and carried on a quiet dialogue the whole time. Absolutely love what you do, Steve. Jeff from Indy. Huh. There you go. Uh, I'm just going back. One second. Fire turn on the phone. Hi, sorry. Hmm. All right, so I guess you're looking for that interaction. You're looking for an experience. What are you looking for? I don't know what you're after, man. But you got to be be careful what you summons, right? Be careful what you ask for out there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I try not to do anything that'll... Because I, I think in the past, one time I was... Like I'm just saying, I try not to do anything to create an interaction so far to date with me. I just, I'm not into it. Leave me alone. I've seen enough. I've heard enough. I've had shit thrown at me. I'm good. I don't need this ruined for me. I love it out in the real world. It's my world. It's what I do. I don't, I would never. Myself? Would I go out and play the Sierra Sands in the woods by myself? Nope. I wouldn't do it here in the property. That's just me. I say flat out, nonstop. Just leave me alone, man. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm not into you, but I have a couple times in the past. I created a response by accident. One time, I was splitting huge fur log rounds with a splitting wedge and a mall right near Mount Curry, British Columbia, where there's shit going on nonstop. And sure enough, and then sure enough, uh tree knocks blasts from the timber started echoing down off the side of the mountain way up there in the timber full timbered slope i'm like holy shit hear that and we listened we listened to my friend with me we listened then boom again then boom again hmm. Hmm. there you go right and the other time was when i was trapping wolves up the pemberton valley and uh nobody was there and i was I was slugging. This is right near that stand. Remember the stand? This is only about maybe 100 meters from the stand in that in those big cedars. So you can, if you've seen me take you to the stand, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll recall how, how deep and dark that timber is and how big those first growth cedar trees were. And kind of creepy in there, man. The big swamp. And I was trying to, trying to uh, set my wolf traps, and I was slinging my metal shanked S-twing hammer into the base of a huge first growth cedar tree with fencing staples going into my aircraft cable and uh, boom the tree knocking started right above me on an angle like that of, sounded like maybe I don't know, could have been a couple hundred yards away and then boom an answer over here above my snowmobile where I left it Oh, that sucked. That sucked. I just uh, looked at the ground, put all my stuff back in my backpack, had a 243 rifle with me, picked all my stuff, and I snowshoed straight back to my sled listening to this shit. Stressed level 12 out of 10. And then, because uh, it was brand new, fresh snow, I went in on this old road on my sled and the brand new, fresh powder. I was probably on five feet of snow. And uh, typically, when you go to turn around, you can you're, you're, when you put it reverse, your sled will bog down and you'll get stuck. Because I'm not the best sledder in the world, but that stress of not turning around smoothly was really eating at me. <laughs> Just hoping to God your sled's going to turn around smooth and not get stuck. And then I got that sled turned around and I pinned it. I pinned it out of there. And I never looked back behind me. And I didn't look off to the side of me either. Because another guy I know, A-type hunting guide from Alberta, he used to come up and guide with us in northern BC for years. And his brother told me that he had a reddish-brown huge being pacing him in the timber, keeping up with him easily on a snowmobile. And that, that was a direct first-hand encounter related to me, and it always creeped me out because I could just picture it. That would be a real alarming experience. 
right? And I that was always in the back of my head too when I'm on my slide up in that country. And I just didn't need that going down. I didn't want to look behind me and see something like that running behind me. I didn't want to look to the side of me and see something like that running beside me effortlessly in the timber. I just, I just looked straight forward and pinned it and I left and I never went back there until I took you guys there to go see the stand that they tore down. They 100% they 100% uh, tore that so stand down. Anyway, Babylon. Let's get some important voices heard. Yeah, I'm just saying. I don't ask for it. But I need the whole world to know the truth. Here we go. What's this one? Ooh, this is a long one. No paragraphs. Titled, I Know I'm a Member. Hey Steve, it's Robbie Martin from Kelowna. Use my name. Just did. <laughs> Just kidding. I've been a fax by watcher since you started. One crazy journey. I won't pump your head up by blowing sunshine up your ass. You get it enough, so I'll get to it. LOL. Okay, thanks, man. Through listening to the people, gathering knowledge, and putting together my puzzle, I'm now a knowing member of the club in no return. While kayaking in Half Moon Bay with my family's rental and touring business, I took off on my own to hug the coast, as I do. Half Moon Bay, there's a lot, to go, a lot has gone on and still goes on around Half Moon Bay. When under a rocky, heavily wooded overhang, I had pine cones fall and hit my bow. I moved away thinking that rocks may come, or heavy branches. The hitting continued. Had to be a squirrel or something moving further back, worried about my brother Cam's gel coat. I looked up, and it was clear of any tree overhang. But the barrage continued. Some hitting the boat, some not. Now I'm thinking it must be the birds dropping shit at me. I'm a little annoyed. So I paddled hard and quick for about 50 yards or so, looking at the shore and up. Nothing. Although now, rocks the size of D-cell batteries hitting the water around me. Way off, shore, off the shore. Now, for the love of Pete... Now what for the love of Pete is going on? I just took off and joined the group, thinking nothing of it again. Until you. Listening to the people, I soon realized this might have been an experience since there is nothing that could launch a projectile that heavy that far and with that accuracy except for one thing no way a human could throw like that and from there you know the terrain almost sheer cliff with evergreen trees and rock what the f last summer latest summer of 2023 myself and my buddy leonard took off to hope for a camp retreat for his church i wanted to hit Garnet Beach on Harrison Lake. We drove on a well-groomed service road up the right side of the lake, stopping to see the sights along the way. Not sure where this beach was exactly. We kept going. Now, for some reason, I had a feeling like we were going to have a visitor. Searching my gut to see whatever... Whatever... Sorry, you guys. Searching my gut to see what maybe that was. Someone we knew or what, not sure. I pulled off the main service road towards the lake. With the sun dropping behind the mountain, I got out to skip rocks on the lake. Len was old and not so mobile, so we stayed in the car. Before access to the lake, I had to find a path through some thin trees that lined the shores. While skipping some stones, I swear, I heard someone laughing at me as I stuffed a few into the face of an eight inch breaker washing up on shore, lol. The lake was almost dead calm except for the gentle breeze causing these skip rejecting ripples. It was getting cooler and darker, but still blue sky. I walked back, I walked back when right in the middle of the path I just walked through, sticking straight up, was a perfect eagle feather. Odd, so I, odd, so I, I picked it up with this wash over me. I looked around, there was no one, no sound, nothing. I thanked the great 
I thanked the great creator for the gift and walked up to the car. Lenny was passed out in the back seat and in no way could see me from his line of sight at the lake. So I got in asking if he was laughing at me. No answer, still asleep. When I started the car, I drove up to a T at the service road looking to my left. The road, covered by tall, dense, spooky evergreens, was almost, almost pitch black. My eyes focusing, I swear, I could make out movement. A humanoid figure around six feet, thick in stature, took one step into the tree line and made a very obvious bipedal crunch, crunch as it stepped into the tree line and blended into the darkness. I said, Len, did you hear that? He said, yes. What was that? I said, I don't think, I said, I think it was a junior Sabe. Holy shit, no way. I shut off the car and tried talking to it. I could feel something there, but couldn't see shit. The blue sky over the trees didn't help. Just made the road darker. I got no communication, I got no communication back, nothing. But I could feel his presence. Trying to tune into the frequency of the forest, but got nothing. Then a tingle of another, more pronounced, watching us all. I instantly got a feeling it wasn't about me. I think they were curious about my passenger. Len has distant First Nations blood, so do I, do I, although never recognized in my Irish Belgian, f sorry, let me read that sentence again. Len has distant First Nations blood, so do I, although never recognized in my Irish Belgian family. I figured Junior was gone, so I made a right and drove off. We approached a clearing, and I saw a huge owl take off of take off of a more sandy cliff face, which was a lot clearer since we came out of the dense stuff. It was huge. We could hear the wind being displaced under a large wingspan as it flew over towards the lake and out of sight. Again, odd. As it got darker and further down the service road, Len said, Look! I looked around and saw nothing. Up there! I bent my neck into the windshield and looked up. Two small lights shining through the trees like flashlights poking through. I shook my head in a double take and I saw two white orbs high in the trees weaving through the branches intelligently. My gut says that was the same consciousness as... My gut says that was the same consciousnesses <laughs> from just before, only a few miles away. I stopped and tried to see more, but I couldn't. We went on to the Hot Springs Hotel, barely making it with fuel. I tripped out and slept in the car watching your videos. <laughs> Thank you, Z. <laughs> Z. I slept in the car. So that's about it. There was one more time, and the only time I've spent in the real world since. Not knowing why. Maybe just to connect to the forest. I walked up Beaver Lake Road a few miles from Lake Country, B.C. I found a large tree that looked inviting to sit under. Only 25 yards from the service road, but that's enough not to be seen. I had next to nothing for survival on me, so I was careful not to venture too far in. I sat trying to center my breathing and calm my mind in hopes of connecting somehow. All I did is nod off. I woke up out of a dream to be abrupt. Sorry. I woke up out of a dream to an abrupt leave. It jarred me awake. No, I'm not sure if that was a dream or what. So, a little freaked out, I just complied. Off to my right was a feeling of pressure, as you called it. About 20 yards away again. Odd. So I walked on. All I could hear is my lumbering steps like a dumb, obvious human until I stopped. One more step, not of my own, or an echo. Are you kidding me? After listening to the people on your channel having the same experience, I laughed and hustled back down the road. I saw nothing, looked back every five steps, the whole way, nothing. I would never have thought anything of those experiences until gathering the knowledge from your channel and the people. So, thank you to you and the Club Knowers. You're the real deal, bro. One of the great ones. Keep up your journey and I'll... And I'll join you. I read somewhere that reading info and listening to info requires a different part of the brain. I've not missed many videos since the beginning about five years ago. 
So possibly I know more than you. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I'm with you on the multiple flight. I'm with you on the multiple flight of steps and puzzle pieces. Keep falling into place. Two things haunted or resonated with me. Quote, control of the labor to appease the entity, end quote. End, end quote. Are you joking? You're a dick. Now that'll haunt me for the rest of my days. <laughs> yeah, right? Also, quote, we don't need to rely on faith. We can go to where he is now, end quote. Now, if I wasn't sober like I am now, I would have thought bullshit. If it wasn't from a reliable source and came from a movie I saw, it would have been easier to believe it came from, from some celebrity pussy in some film. So yeah, thanks for that. It's all good. Happy New Year with the love and the light. Robbie J.C. Martin from Kelowna. Okay, Robbie. Appreciate you writing in, man. Appreciate you writing in. You said your family has a rental and touring business. I wonder how many people or how many family members have had experiences around Happen Bay. All right? I guess you don't really have to be... Uh, you don't really have to go anywhere specific around here to have to potentially have an experience of what's going on in what I consider the real world, right? No, that uh sorry, off topic. Dolores Cannon. Is that her that was her name, right? I listened to her this morning around 3 30. I listened to her. Give her a chance. Definitely older recordings, right? And she seems very confident in her messages and her knowledge. I haven't listened to her enough. And she was talking about, in that particular video, she was talking about the different dimensions and how they are parallel with us. So anyways, what my question is and what I was caught myself wondering about today was what we do to the environment here where we are right here in this dimension. Was this the third 3D dimension? Whatever. I'm not, don't quote me on shit because I'm not familiar with it intimately yet. But uh, let's just say there are parallel Par parallel existence is going on right beside us, which I am pretty well convinced there must be. It's the only thing that can help make sense of this shit show, right? But what I'm wondering is, do our actions here affect the other dimensions, quality of life, whatever, within these other potential dimensions. I wonder if that's what's going on. If Is that possible? Let's just say extreme, an extreme uh, example. Some asshole hits the button and det detonates a few uh, nuclear bombs against human beings and it gets a little escalated and out of control. I wonder if that has a direct effect on other dimensions, if that is what's going on. And if so, Can the people who frequent these other dimensions even, do they know about us? Can they come here at will? Can they stop us? The thoughts, right? The crazy ass shit that your brain comes up with while trying to fill all these puzzles. And I got so many puzzles in front of me right now, it's a little overwhelming, but oh, wrong to the point. If I try to talk about it, I probably sound like a wacko path. Oh, well. And there's my knife sitting on my desk as a uh, reminder. A reminder that the impossible is real. So bizarre, this blade still has all the... I mean, there was dirt stuck to it right here. You can see where the dirt was stuck there, the mud. And there was dirt stuck there and stuck there. You can see the corrosion in the metal. Corrosion all along that edge. And this knife was pristine brand spanking new when it was in its sheath in my backpack that November. And then it shows up just like this laying on top of my trail cameras and my snacks in my backpack. Seven months later at eight miles distant. <laughs> this is the symbol. This is just a symbol to me now that the uh, the unbelievable is real and that crazy shit is truly going on, right? Hope we get the answers. I'm not sure what I want more right now for myself. Do I want all the answers or, or do I want to, uh, or do I want to, uh, 
do whatever I can to try to prevent the bad people from having this shit-eating effect on society as they are today. You know what I mean? That's a huge concern of mine. As, as well as my concern for all the people out there who are having all of this crazy-ass shit happen to them and they got nowhere to talk about it, nowhere to go. Those are both very, very big concerns for me in this lifetime, currently. And it makes it frustrating, right? Because I want to experience every single thing I can in this lifetime. I want to be happy, I want to be healthy, I want to experience all the things that make me feel happy and make me healthy. But at the same time, I want to go jump in all these battles too, right? It'd be frustrating. Time consuming. And not knowing, well, you, you think you're doing the right thing but not knowing fully if you have made it to the point of absolutely doing the right thing or not yet. I'm getting closer. Where to put, where and when to focus all of your energy on something significant that's really going to make a huge difference. I hope I'm making sense, <laughs> right? You know what I'm going to say. My lips and my brain don't mesh up smoothly all the time. Anyway, I think I'll be able to manage to uh, hang out with everybody from here one more time before we leave. When we leave, we're going to be gone for a while. We're going to be gone for a while. Again, it's my time of the year to work on myself, physical, physically and mentally. And all the while trying to maintain uh, keeping the voices heard. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here because I'm a babbling dork right now. I've got a lot to do. So, I hope everybody had a great Merry Christmas. I hope all the people that thought they were alone realize they aren't. I think we've we reached out to a lot of people. We got the message across clear, clearly, didn't we? And I'll be back again soon. Share my story at howtohunt.com. If that email's full, tell my story at howtohunt.com. All right, you guys? If you have important information that can help the people and it needs to be heard by a lot of people, get it to me. If you got something that has had a massive negative impact on your life because of what's going on out there and you aren't taught about it, then you want to share it finally, get it to me. I'll share it. You don't want your name known? I won't share your name. All right? Everybody's... <laughs> Everybody in the world needs to come together and start acting like a tight, concerned, caring community again real quick. That's what I do know. That's what I do know for a fact. Everybody needs to start picking up their pants and giving a shit about their neighbor right now. In a big way. Everybody needs to start caring about their neighbor, about their community, and what's going on. Anyway, there we go. Enough babble. I'm out of here. I'll be back. <laughs>